Um, Team USA is dominating the Tokyo Olympics with athletes in track and field, gymnastics, and other sports winning more medals and shattering. Hello, today I present to you an extremely attractive application for music lovers. It's completely free. You can listen to music online or download unlimited music to use whenever you don't have internet. The powerful search function helps you find anything you want. Trust me. It's hard not to find what you're looking for because the search function is really powerful. Application download link is attached in the description of the video. I'm pretty sure you'll like it. Thanks. Records. But as the summer games wrap up this weekend, COVID-19 remains a major threat. Earlier today, organizers reported 29 more cases linked to the Olympics. Four of those were athletes, and more than 300 infections have been recorded since July 1st. So Jamie Yukis is in Tokyo with the latest for us. Um, let's talk about these cases first off, Jamie. What more do we know about the 29 new COVID cases uh, and what are officials saying? The interesting thing about these Olympics is that because of COVID, they really limited the amount of time athletes could be here in Japan. They come in a day or two ahead of their event so that they can get acclimated. They then participate in their events and then they get home. Uh, it's not a typical Olympics where you have people hanging out or staying in the uh, Olympic Village and, and going sightseeing, that kind of thing. So it could be one of those things that the athletes are traveling in, potentially infected, uh, and that's what we're seeing happening in, in terms of those cases. Now, what I can tell you is that in Tokyo there are more than 4,000 cases reported. That's the most ever uh, in this city through the entire pandemic. And they really, government officials are blaming, of course, the Delta variant, much like we're seeing in the United States at this point in time. They're seeing a lot of cases, it turns out, in schools and in offices. And what the government's saying is that while they don't attribute these spikes to the Olympics themselves, they believe that because the Olympics are happening, people have let their guard down a little bit. They've returned to some of their normalcy because they see that these Olympics are happening in their backyard. Maybe they want to get together with friends and family to watch the games because they can't actually go to the venues and see what's happening. Uh, or they're just going out and they're and they're trying to live their lives the best that they can. Uh, and that is it creating this increase in spikes around the country. So they're actually now talking about it. It was just particular areas and cities that were under a lockdown. The Japanese government is now looking at a national lockdown that could happen. And a lot of people here, when I've been reading some of the local newspapers, they're really disappointed in hearing that because they have so much fatigue uh, over these lockdowns. They've had four, this is the fourth emergency lockdown. Um, and it's not one of those things where you have to adhere to locking down, uh, but most people do because the, uh, the Japanese have a tendency to be very good rule followers, Anne-Marie. Mm -hmm. um, now the latest on that sprinter from Belarus, just to sort of remind people, she complained publicly about some of the decisions being made uh, with the Olympics and her um, in Belarus. Uh, if people don't know, the country is essentially run by a dictator. They tried to put her on a plane and send her back to Belarus before the Olympics were over. She received a humanitarian visa from Poland. She has left Japan already. Where's she going? What's going on with her? Oh, so that's, aren't there so many twists and turns? Are we used to the drama yet? Each day the story <laughs> yes. has another layer to it. So it turns out that the sprinter, uh, she, you know, she goes to the airport. She says, I'm not getting on the plane to Belarus. There's no way I'm going back there. Uh, the, the Polish officials give her a humanitarian visa. But now today, as she's set to leave for Warsaw, it turns out that they found out, uh, some, some officials found out, that there were potentially some reporters on her plane. They thought that that could potentially be a threat to her. Uh, and so they decided and told everyone on the plane she's actually not going to be on this plane. Uh, so people didn't know exactly where she went. Then government officials came out and said she's actually going to be going to Vienna uh, in Austria first, and then she will be going to Poland. So we have another layer to this whole uh, saga that everybody will be watching. It, it should happen a little bit. It's nighttime here in Japan. It should happen tomorrow. Uh, so we'll keep you updated on that. Yeah, I mean, and you can understand why there would be concerns. Just to remind people, another plane with a critic of the Belarusian dictator on it was diverted uh, earlier uh, this year, last year, rather, I think, um, earlier this year, um, and it was forced to land in Belarus. So, you know, that's why security is so important when it comes to this story. Um, on to some Americans now. Um, American shot putter Raven Saunders, she made headlines when she crossed her arms in sort of an ex 
Olympics formation when she was receiving the silver medal. She also revealed on social media that her mother passed away. Do we know anything about that and, yeah. and when that her mother may have passed? Yeah, so we don't know the cause of death and we don't know what day her mother passed away, but a lot of people pointing to the fact that her mother was seen and was interviewed by some local television stations in Florida at one of those huge family watch parties. Uh, and she had said that, you know, she was disappointed that she couldn't see her daughter compete uh, in the Olympic Games. So it was relatively recent that she just made these statements about her daughter. So we're not sure exactly when, but, you know, there was that investigation happening by the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, about her making that stand on the podium doing the X uh, while she was standing there receiving her medal. The IOC has now said under these circumstances, they are pausing that investigation and they will not be moving forward at this time. See, you know, people watch these athletes and they think the only pressure they're under is, you know, to succeed and win a medal. And there may be so many other things going on in their personal life that they are sort of persevering through. Uh, hopefully we're all learning a lesson um, with us Simone Biles, but also with others watching them, um, you know, achieve their goals despite the challenges. Jamie Ukas, thank you very much. You're welcome. It's true of all of us, right, Anne-Marie? you got to have empathy. That is spot on. Thank you, Jamie.